day, motherfuckers. Welcome back, and I hope we're saying staying safe. Or I almost fucked that bit up. But yeah, look, I hope we're having a happy Easter as well. Every I know it's you know uh, it's probably a little bit odd um, coming up to Easter. Well, we're not coming up to Easter, but we're actually right in the middle of it. In our eye, so Easter as I guess it's been coined. I hope everyone's staying safe and. You know, you can always take time to FaceTime your family. You can always take time to contact them through social media. You know, so we're not alone here. Very much reach out. Have a have a safe and happy Easter. Eat heaps of chocolate and all the best. Anyway, moving on. This video is going to be about uh, Hunter S. Thompson. It's my top five Hunter S. Thompson books with a couple of uh, bonus books in there, which aren't actually Hunter S. Thompson. There's a few other ones, but look, yeah, I thought I'd jump straight into it. Forgive me for fixing my uh, my earphones. But yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying the Bat Cave as well. We'll be digging into that a bit further too, which would be really cool. If you guys, like I said, have any ideas in regards to any comics you want to see, or any, any comics you want me to review, any records or anything like that, send me a message. That'd be really cool. But anyway, uh, I'll get into number five, which is Kingdom of Fear. This book. Now, this was, I'm pretty sure it's his, it was his last release. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a great book. Again, it's a collection of, um, of kind of, like, his, like, a stream of thoughts, you know, um, very much along the lines of Jack Couric, or, help, you know, uh, on the road food, I think. I always fuck the his name up, but very much along that lines in, re in, re in regards to a um, stream of consciousness and I think he was pretty much residing out at um, Shady Creek at this point um, and he was having a lot of uh, a lot of I guess celebrity visitors Johnny Depp all those kind of dudes um, and yeah so this is kind of uh, about that era and you can definitely tell it because it's it's quite sophisticated in regards to what he's talking about and the um, the content that he's going through, but it's still got the Hunter S. Thompson seal of approval, if you will. Uh, it does get pretty dark towards it. My favourite quote, yeah, I think it, what it ends on is... No, I actually won't. It's not that one. It's another one where he's saying that um, him and his wife uh, have come to the conclusion that he has the soul of a 12-year-old girl. But anyway, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? So it's a little bit, not incoherent, but... It's not as... He's definitely getting on a little bit. Um, which is a good thing, you know, because it's a little bit more mature. But that's probably what I'd say with our top five. It, again, it's a collection. It's not uh, a full story. It's different short stories from different pers perspectives. Another one I really like, um, and it's really good given the, the current climate with everything at the moment, is the... There's one short story where he's talking about how he's staying up and how he, wh how he gets... The real news is he's, he's, he's got something like 200 satellite channels and he's constantly flicking through them. By doing that, he's able to kind of read between the lines and I guess tell what the truth is, but I guess it's the media, so who knows. But I thought that was a really, really uh, profound image of him sitting there at all hours of the morning. And he talks about it, sitting there till 6 a.m. and all that kind of stuff and how he's flicking through and he's got his typewriter there and he's kind of commenting on each uh, news channel and this news channel is that and this news report is that. I think that's really cool to get that kind of perspective because you don't usually get that, forgive me for my burps. I'm just uh, down to a latte, which was a bit too quick for my liking. But yeah, so this is a great little book. Kingdom of Fear, check that out. Now the next one. So we're looking at number four is... The Great Shark Hunt, almost a great white shark hunt there, but this is fantastic. Um, this is, again, a collection of his memoirs, short stories, all that kind of stuff, but it's a much greater span. And actually, it's it, it takes some of his works from his most famous... It takes some of his writing from his most famous works, um, including Fear and Loathing on the Campaign Trail, which is definitely on this list as well. That's a must-read for any Hunter S. Thompson fans. Um but this is amazing. Now, I'm just going to read the first page because it's quite... So we go straight into it and there's a couple of... You know, we've got... <laughs> I love this. To Richard Milhouse Nixon, who never let me down. 
Hunter S. Thompson. Now, I don't know if you guys know about their relationship, and he's talking obviously about the, the ex-president, Richard Nixon. They had, well, they, they hated each other, but they respected each other. Uh, and it really goes into depth um, in regards to that with the fear and loathing stuff, uh, fear and loathing on the campaign trial, because there's a really um, prominent point in there where he actually gets an interview with Nixon, and he says, despite all the, this is Lockie's translation, despite all the shit I've talked about, despite all the shit we've talked about each other, we actually sat down and we talked about hockey. And I thought that was, you know, that's really cool because you know, these two men are at the opposite ends of the spectrum in regards to, I guess, what their beliefs are, all that kind of stuff. And we all know about Richard Nixon. So it's really kind of profound that he can put all his bullshit aside and, yeah, talk about it, which is really, really cool. Um, but definitely check that out. Now, onto the first page. Forgive me while I scroll through all this stuff here. First page has actually got some. I can get to it. Now this is just to give you an idea of what what he's how he writes. I got off the plane around midnight, and no one spoke as I crossed the dark runway into the terminal. The air was thick and hot, like wandering into a steam bath. Inside, people hugged each other and shook hands. Big grins and a whoop here and there. My God, you old bastard, good to see you, boy. Damn good, and I mean it. In the air-conditioned lounge, I met a man from Houston who said his name was something or other, but just call me Jimbo. And he was here to get it on. I'm ready for anything. By God, anything at all. Well, what are you drinking? I ordered a uh, margarita with ice, but he wouldn't hear of it. No, no. What the hell kind of drink is that for, for a Kentucky Derby time? What the hell is wrong with you, boy? He grinned and winked at the bartender. God damn, we got to educate this boy. Get him some good whiskey. That's like paragraph one. Now, this is actually definitely taken from uh, the Kentucky Derby, which he was covering, covering during Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, I'm pretty sure. That's when he's out in the desert running around. I might be mistaken there, but I am not sure. Definitely check this out. This is a great little book. Oh, little... This is a great collection of his stories, which is really cool. When he was actually getting published, I think, at Rolling Stone and all those kind of publishers. Now, a quick background for people who don't know Hunter S. Thompson, I probably should have done this at the start of the video, is uh, he's a, you know, he wrote Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, um, the inspiration for uh, the movie. The movie's pretty much the book bang on, and Johnny Depp absolutely nails, like, all his mannerisms and stuff, but... In terms of his writing, his writing is qu quite next level, and he kind of t uh, uh, coined the term Gonzo in terms of ha the... And don't get me wrong, um, Gonzo has been around for a lot longer, but it just hasn't had a label on it. It's very much a stream of consciousness um, right here, right now kind of talk. And there's, like, for example, there's another instance where he's talking about... Um, what was it? He's... It's not even anything important. It's about he's. I think he's just taken a whole bunch of mescaline, and he's writing on his typewriter, and it's starting off as quite coherent and quite like, you know, I'm writing here. I'm starting to feel shivering light all around me. My body is getting light. Blah 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 blah. And you can actually you can see the difference in his writing as the mescaline starts to take hold. Outlandish stuff. Outlandish. So that's Hunter S. Thompson. Now on to the next one. Now, if I, if, you know, I'm a drummer, so forgive me, I always fuck the count up. Three, I'm pretty sure. This is the infamous Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Now, this book is awesome. It's only a very, I guess, if you, this is, I guess, Ret Return of the King in regards to, because there's, there's not a trilogy, but you should definitely read the previous Fear and Loathing on the campaign trail, and there's a couple of others that kind of lead into what this is. Um, and this is effectively where he kind of, or where Gonzo writing was cemented in terms of what it was. Um, I'm pretty sure that if he did, wasn't writing or if he wasn't um, noting what he was going through, he probably wouldn't have made it out alive. And his attorney, the lawyer, again, I forgot the name. Um, I think that's, uh, who, who was he played by? I've forgotten as well, but outlandish shit. And um, the, there's a quite dark bit in the great white shark 
previous book up where they kind of the aftermath of this and kind of what happened and all that kind of stuff but definitely check it out it's a fantastic read and it's short too like if you got i always read this on a plane um because it only takes you you know one or two hours to finish it's hilarious because you always pick up new little kind of nuances and but the movie and the book are pretty much bang on it's very rare that the movies kind of nail what's happening and they do and this is this is again a fantastic read Ooh, i'm a bit burpy check it out absolutely awesome now this is number two hell's angels this was his first uh published book this is this is really cool and it, and you can tell with the writing style it's a precursor to what would later be cemented as gonzo writing or very much the hunter s thompson kind of writing um it's it's a pretty much he he spends about a year or two with the hell's angels and this is back in the 60s and he and he I guess his mission is he wants to get to the bottom of, I get the reputation. I guess now this is before, you know, they morphed into what they were today. Um, so I can't comment on anything like that. But yeah, it, it's very insightful, not only to the Hell's Angels, but to the time it was written. Um, you know what society was kind of going through, how they viewed these kind of people, um, how they responded as well, because whole towns, multiple towns, would go into lockdown. Cause it's and, and it culminates in a massive festival and shit just hits the fan. Hunter S. Thompson doesn't... <laughs> I'm not going to spoil it, but y- you need to read this. And there's also an interview he did, which was, I think it was 1965, which is after he wrote this. And so, let's just say things didn't end well and he had to leave rather quickly. Um, and in this interview, you actually see him meeting one of the guys for the last like since i don't know i think it was two years and they kind of confront each other and it's it's quite eye-opening um you can tell they did um have some good feelings towards him because if it was anyone else i don't think they would have got away but look it's a really great read again i'm just going to pick a random page and read it just to give it a bit of an idea idea our final purchase at the beer market was a dozen cans of horse meat for Pete's big red bone hound. The dog had been on other runs and seemed to know the spirit. It ate constantly, never seeming to sleep, and went into long fits of howling for no apparent reason. We drove back into camp very slowly. The cars were so jammed with loose six-pack packs that I could barely move my arms to steer, and each bump in the road caused the springs to drag on the rear axle. When we got to the Willow Cove turnoff, the car wouldn't climb the dirt hill that led into the pines. So I backed off and made a fast run at it, driving the junker straight into the hill like a cannonball. Our momentum took us over the hump, our car filled with beer. Now that's chapter 13. That's, yeah, re- really starting to get good there. Absolutely awesome book. Check it out, check it out. Now, For the ultimate uh, number one, I'm pretty sure, number two, one, no, two, how many fingers do I have? Anyway, this is probably my favorite uh, Hunter S. Thompson book. Um, I got a collector's edition, and it's The Curse of Lono. Uh, and the art, it's obviously hardcover. Now, the artwork's all done by his good friend, Ralph Steedman. Now, this is very similar to Fear and Loathing, where it's kind of, in, instead of the attorney going on uh, the vacation with him, it, he's going on vacation with Ralph Steven. Now, Ralph Steven's an interesting character because he's very much like a Dr. Jekyll and Hyde. When he's sober, he's a very, from what I've read here and what I read elsewhere, he's very, what's the word? Not complacent, but he's quiet, keeps to himself, I guess quite polite, until he <laughs> hits the alcohol. Now, the alcohol is what fueled um, the drawings, all that kind of stuff. And it's essentially what happens is they get stuck. They get stuck in Hawaii and going in there, they think it's going to be this beautiful, you know, kind of getaway. They're going to relax. They're going to get out in the sun. It doesn't turn that way at all. They pretty much think they're going to die. And to get over it, what they do is take o- uh, copious amounts of alcohol and narcotics to get through. 
that just makes things worse. And it, uh, I'm pretty sure he gets to a point, point. Now, Lono is the, I think he's the, de- uh, the god of that island. And for some reason, the locals start to believe, or I guess maybe Hunter S. Thompson convinces them that he's the next incarnation of Lono. Now, the book kind of goes, and you're like, oh, that's, okay, it's a bit weird, it's a bit out there, but uh, I can get into that, it's a bit cool. Now, I'm pretty sure um, Lono has to die at the end of that, <laughs> um, that story. So, uh, Hunter kind of cottons on and freaks out a little bit. He ends up taking, like, a fishing boat out off his face, and he pretty much either totals that and then totals another boat, has to swim back, the locals absolutely are furious and shit just yeah it's 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 a shit storm it's really really funny and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse until the point there's not really an, well there's an ending but again they just have to get the fuck out of dodge which is uh, a common trait with Tom's now the artwork in it is magnificent um you've probably seen a lot of Ralph Stevens work before if you're a fan of Hunter S Thompson the biggest reason is he did the artwork for Fear and Loathing, and I'm pretty sure he was the artistic consultant for the movie as well. So you know when you see the lizards in the in Las Vegas, and they're all eating each other, and they look all filthy and slimy, and blah, blah, blah. that's Ralph Steedman. He did the, and in the actual book, he there's a drawing of that as well, which is really cool. So you got to check this out. This is fucking hilarious, and like how he gets into the mess messes that he does, and that how he survives, and how he's able to kind of make something out of it is it's a talent into it onto itself it's it's really really kind of like what the fuck he is truly a once in a lifetime kind of guy now i want to show you quick something quickly before i do wrap this video up um you get in this it's got the artwork's absolutely amazing in this now there's a couple of he, the letters that he actually wrote um and you'll see the gonzo logo i'll show you i'm not sure if you can see it it's this Thing here that's an actual copied letter what they're faxed through in the book which is cool really cool really really authentic as well. but that's my top five list I know I haven't really <laughs> followed the rule there now this isn't Hunter S Thompson it's something else this is um, the portable Jung this is a really really it's quite deep but if you want to kind of get into what Jung, Jung however you say it, what he was talking about this is a perfect starting point there's an introduction done by Joseph Campbell, who's pretty much the founding work, uh, founding member of um, mythology and symbolism and all that kind of stuff. Amazing book. The other one, which I'm actually currently reading at the moment, is The Infamous Dracula. This is awesome. And I didn't actually realize it's kind of written, wrote, written, wrote in the same, obviously much, much earlier, but you could argue that this is the precursor to Gonzo because it's all done in a stream of consciousness kind of way, which I didn't really cotton on to until I started reading it. And I was like, oh shit, this is really cool. And it really paints the picture of the era and that kind of stuff. So check that out. It's only, it should only be anywhere from like 15 bucks to nine, five dollars. Check it out guys. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this up. Have a really awesome Easter. Stay safe, eat, eat, eat heaps of chocolates. Stay tuned, there'll be some drumming videos. Check out my uh, my album on Spotify if you can too. If not, that's no stress. Drop a like, drop a comment, and subscribe. I'm doing all that shit now. So, all the best guys. Peace out, yeah?